It's a prehistoric fish, very prehistoric. It's been here for millions and millions of years. It's survived whatever killed the dinosaurs, they were here, they made it. It's an important part of nature. It's an important part of everything. I mean, how can you say that you, you know, we, we can live without one species. Something I'd like to show you is this, this hook is what was used by violators in the Wolf River. They would hang this on a, on a line strung across the river and when the fish would swim by, this, would, this had about a foot of line on it or more tied to a rope. And it would rotate around and hook into the belly of the fish. And they would take them out and must have had a market for them or wherever, maybe Chicago, who knows? We don't know where all the fish, where all the eggs went to. It was mainly the black eggs they were after. I think one of the best things that happened was that since Sturgeon for Tomorrow started, I remember bringing DNR people, department people, to one of our first dinners, our first fundraising dinners. And when they would, when they would walk in there, and these, a lot of these were biologists. A lot of these weren't necessarily game wardens or anything. It was like, it was like bringing the enemy into this hunting club, you know, or fishing club. And now it is so different. Now Ron Brooks comes, he's our biologist, and, and Fred Binkowski from the Great Lakes Center in, in Milwaukee. He comes to our dinners and people just have so many things they want to talk to them about. And they, you know, it's turned the whole thing is so different. Everyone has sort of a different attitude. They understand that there's a restriction on how many fish you can take. There's people that would like to spear 25 sturgeon if they could, you know. But I mean, in all, the, the greatest number of fishermen here are conservationists first, I guess. I bought a new, I bought a new spear Because now this is this is state of the art. See, it's got flying barbs on it. See how they close up. Mm. And when you hit a fish with that, these open up, and they will hold a fish. So, so, and then it attaches to this long handle, which is right here. See, so. Did you have that made or is that? Yeah, I, a friend of mine made that for me. And there's, there's a lot of them on the lake. There's many, many different spear makers on the lake. My shandy, by the way, is shaped like a, it's a round roof shandy. I found some round rafters left over from World War II Quonset Hut. Uh, they were like two by two round rafters. And a friend of mine had them in his garage and he said, Can you have any use for these things? And I bought them for, for about a dollar a piece. And I thought, I'm gonna build a fishing shanty, which is that shaped like a Green Bay Packer helmet. It's been out there since Vince Lombardi was in Green Bay at the time. 
that's how long I've had that shandy. Uh, it's getting old, but it still serves a purpose, you know. And it's a great way to pass the winter in Wisconsin. You got to remember that. It's a long winter, and I don't go to Florida, you know. So. That's the book. That's the book that we just finished, so. Congratulations. Yeah, that's great, wonderful, wonderful book.